Measuring piston to valve clearance is pretty easy. There are two ways you can go about this. One way is an actual physical measurement using modeling clay where uh, you can see the two blue globs here. I've got a little bit of modeling clay stuck in each of the two valve reliefs. I'm gonna stick the cylinder head on the engine, install push rods and valves, and I'm gonna rotate the engine through its normal uh, rotation. And as the piston moves up and down and the valves open and close, uh, the valves will make an impression on this modeling clay. And then I'll pull the head back off, I'll uh, slice through the clay, and I'll measure the thickness. Um, it's, a, it's a good physical verification to make sure that the valves and the pistons have enough clearance between. Um, there are times when they're open at the same time um, in, in um, normal rotation. When the cylinder is coming up on the exhaust stroke, um, the exhaust valve is open and moving closed as the piston comes up to it. Um, you'll reach a point where they're pretty close together. Um, as the cylinder reaches the top of the exhaust stroke, the intake valve starts to open while the exhaust valve is still open. It's called overlap and it helps draw the intake charge in on the next downward stroke. Um, and that's the next point where uh, the valves are close uh, because um, as the cylinder comes up and the exhaust valve closes, the intake valve starts to open before the piston's ever gotten to top dead center, only a little bit though. And then the piston reaches top dead center and moves back down. As it starts to come down, the intake valve really start, starts to open a lot and chase it down. And so those, those are the two points where the valves are closest to the cylinder. When the cylinder is coming up on exhaust stroke, it gets close to the exhaust valve. And when it's coming down on intake stroke, it's pretty close to the intake valve as well. And so uh, using clay will give you a physical measurement to make sure that there's enough space that they're not going to contact each other. The other way to do it is to use a dial indicator. I'm going to use that method as well. Uh, but first, I'm going to do the clay method. And so I've got the clay here. Now all I've got to do is throw a cylinder head on uh, with just a couple nuts to hold it in place. It doesn't have to be torqued or anything like that. Um, and then I'll put in a couple push rods and some rockers. I'll run it through and then I'll pull it back off. These uh, spacers I'm installing, they look like little top hats. These are specifically designed when you're using cylinder heads that have half inch bolt holes on a block that has 7 16 bolts. So all your 289 and 302 blocks have 7 16 head bolts or studs. All of your 351 Windsors have half inch. The aftermarket cylinder head manufacturers, I think pretty universally, uh, use half inch bolt holes in their heads. So if you're going to install them on a 289 or a 302, you've got two options. One is to use uh, 7 16 bolts or studs with those spacers that I just showed you. The other option is a uh, Ford actually makes um, an adapter where it's a bolt that has a half inch diameter um, upper end but a 7 16 threaded portion. Um, I prefer to use the washers, it's a simpler solution in my opinion. So just going to snug this again, it doesn't have to be torqued for this particular type of measurement. 
And then I have to grab my rockers. Again, I've got my checking springs on here. I don't have the, the normal valve springs on here. These are really light springs uh, while I'm doing this. No need to make it uh, more difficult. So I've just gone to zero lash and now I'm just going to rotate the engine through. I sprayed the intake and exhaust valve with a little WD-40 so the clay hopefully won't stick to them. I just uh, I want it to get smushed but I don't want it to stick to the valves. Okay, so that's all of the fasteners removed. Let me pull the head back off. And bring this. I'm gonna bring the camera in so you can see. essentially no indentation meaning that the piston to valve clearance is at least as thick as this clay which is not insubstantial so that's plenty of gap I know I don't have to worry about any damage um, in uh, normal operation, but I'm curious as to what the actual uh, gap is. So I'm going to put the head back on, I'm going to set up my dial indicator, and I'm actually going to measure it using the dial indicator. So I'll pause this and I'll be back in a few. So when I measured the piston and valve clearance using the modeling clay, uh, I didn't see an impression at all on the on the clay uh, and so that leads me to believe that the piston to valve gap is substantial and so in order to figure out just how big it is I've set up a dial indicator it's on my exhaust valve right now and uh, I'm holding it right now because I'm holding the rocker arm because if you can see the needle moving what's happening is even with the weak uh, spring on here uh, it's enough pressure 
that it's trying to collapse the plunger in the lifter. And so before it started doing that, I was able to zero it. Uh, so right here is zero. With the engine set at 10 degrees before top dead center on the exhaust stroke. So what's going on inside the engine is the piston is coming up towards the top of the cylinder. Uh, the exhaust valve was open as the exhaust gases were going out the exhaust port. As the piston approaches the top of its um, travel, the exhaust valve begins to close and you reach a point where the piston is almost at the top and the exhaust valve is still open. That's the point when the piston and the exhaust valve are closest together, about 10 degrees before top dead center. And so that's where we are right now and that's where I zeroed my dial indicator. So now all I have to do is open the valve until it hits the piston. So that's a hundred thousandths, two hundred thousandths, three hundred thousandths, three hundred and fourteen thousandths of an inch. So a little more than three tenths of an inch. That's why I didn't see anything on the modeling clay because it's a pretty substantial gap. And so now I'm going to move the dial indicator over to the exhaust or to the intake valve and take a similar measurement there. You want to make sure that the rocker arm won't contact the dial indicator, but the dial indicator's got to be sitting right on the lip of the valve. Okay, and now I'm going to rotate the engine 10 degrees after top dead center. So we're 10 degrees before right now. Now we're at top dead center. And now we're 10 degrees after top dead center. So what's happened here at 10 degrees after top dead center the piston has come up to top dead center and it's started to go down on the intake stroke. Now the intake valve was already open. The intake valve opened as the piston was coming up on exhaust stroke. The exhaust valve was still open and the intake valve also begins to open. It's called overlap where both valves are open at the same time and it takes advantage of the high velocity exhaust gases ex escaping out the exhaust port to help begin to draw in the intake charge uh, through the intake port. So both valves are open at the same time. The exhaust valve now has closed as we go um, uh, past top dead center and at about 10 degrees after top dead center the piston is on its way down to draw in the intake charge the intake valve is opening and it's sort of chasing the piston down the cylinder and so this is the point where the intake valve and the piston are closest together so I'll set my indicator here to zero And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to open the intake valve until it hits the piston. So that's a hundred thousandths, two hundred thousandths, three hundred thousandths, four hundred thousandths, and just shy of a half inch. Looks like 498. And that is a substantial amount of clearance. Um, it definitely puts this engine in the realm of safe operation. Uh, this is not a small camshaft. Uh, the um, intake uh, lift is 541. The exhaust lift is 526. I measured that with a dial indicator. And um, with, without the rocker's arm measuring it down here at the uh, lifters themselves, um, it should be... Uh, let's see, where is it? 338 on the intake and 329 on the exhaust. And I got both of those measurements with the dial indicator. And then with the push rod and the rocker arm installed, giving it the 1.6 ratio, it should be 541 intake at the valve and 526 um, at the exhaust valve. So 541 intake, 526 exhaust. And I verified both of those with the dial indicator. So I'm getting my full lift. But even at that, I have almost half an inch clearance between the intake valve and the piston. 
and about three tenths of an inch between the exhaust valve and the piston, which is a ton of clearance. I don't have any concerns uh, about uh, interference with this engine as, uh, as long as um, it operates as it should. And so now I've looked at the piston to valve clearance in two different ways and I verified through both of them that we're not going to hit and so I can proceed with the assembly um, of the top end.